I tell him I appreciate him since day one, being a little kid, 20 years old, not knowing half the stuff I know today sitting in front of you guys, um, just making me feel like family and opening the doors for me for a young kid to fulfill his dreams. Um, Howie Roseman, you know, all the long talks, conversations that we had, um, want to tell him I appreciate him. Uh, Andy Reid, like a father figure to me, uh, meant, so, meant so much for me. Uh, I looked at him as, you know, like a second father in my life um, and his success in his career and just him teaching me so much. And, uh, you know, Team Jackson, my older brother Byron Jackson, uh, Travis, Derek, Booker, Coach G, you know, everybody that ever meant anything to me. Um, my sister, Adria, my kids, everybody that pushed me, my friends. Um, everybody just made it possible for me. Can't forget, you know, my father, Bill Jackson, rest in peace. Um, the relationship we had and, you know, what he meant for me, how much he pushed me. Everybody thought he was crazy. You know, him believing me more than anybody in the world. And, you know, I could just remember the conversations we had and, and what it meant. So for me to be sitting in front of y'all today and just to fulfill every every dream we ever talked about, man, is, is surreal. Um, to play for the Philadelphia Eagle logo, man, that, that, that just means the world to me. Um, you know, my mother, Gail Jackson, her being my rock every step of the way after we lost our, our father in 2009, it was tough. But, uh, you know, I, one thing I say, every time I suited up and played in between the white lines, it was just something about playing for Philadelphia to kind of help me cope and get through, you know, me losing my, my father at a young age. So... I just want to say, if it wasn't for that, I don't know how I would have got through it. Um, the brotherhood, all my all, all my teammates, and everybody that challenged me every day, you know, coming to this facility and stepping on that field out there was like no other, man. I, I built some memories and some camaraderie that you'll never get nowhere nowhere else. It was special, and I just want to tell everybody that was a part of my, my ride, I appreciate y'all, man, and, and it's always love, man. So with that being said, if I forgot anybody or I missed anybody, um, you know, it's much love. And last but not least, the Philadelphia fans. You know, that's a special place in my heart. I played a lot of different places in the NFL, but, uh, you know, nevertheless, Philadelphia was never a dull moment. You know, them, them, them fans, they always pushed me. Even if, I, even if I wasn't playing good, they would they, they would got on my butt, you know, because they're going to support you when you're doing good. The minute you're not doing good, they're going to let you hear about it. So. To be able to be a professional and kind of hear that from your fans, man, it just gave you that extra push to go out there and want to be great. You know? And obviously the media, I appreciate y'all too. And, uh, you know, y'all made it exciting for me, man. So with that being said, appreciate y'all. But I'm here to answer questions and let's get it, man. Thank y'all. Sean, how did, how did Andy gain your trust in, when you were a rookie? Oh, man, Andy, uh, Andy was a very amazing guy. I mean, I remember the first conversation we ever had was when he drafted me. And uh, first thing he called and told me, he said, man, I don't want to have to deal with your father, man. It was it, it was a bad rep that was put on my dad, you know, from college and just how enthusiastic my dad was. And just as a father, you know, he always wanted the best in his son. So sometimes his emotions took over. And, uh, you know, the first conversation, Coach Rue was like, man, I heard a lot about your dad. But he's like, I don't want to deal with him, man. But uh, it just kind of really showed that, you know, he, he, he installed – you know, ownership. And when I say ownership, he he, he expect the best out of you. You, you, you. Whatever you put in, that's what you're going to get out. And uh, as a young kid growing up and not really un knowing what the NFL is going to present, he, from day one, he let me know, like, it's going it's to take work. If, if you work, you're going to get everything out of it that you want. And, uh, you know, he, he the father figure part of it was, you know, when there was times I was going through things in life, he understood the temptation. He understood, you know, because he was from California as well. He knew... I had the world on my shoulders, and at any given time, he could see it on my face. And I used to come into practice or come into work, and he was like, I, I could tell you going through stuff. He was like, man, when you come to work, all that stuff got to be out the window, man. You got to focus on ball. And I, I was able to understand that as a young age to say, you know, sometimes if I'm going through something in my daily life, you can't bring it in here because, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dwell on you. And, uh, you know, playing in the league and playing football, you got to focus on this because if you're not focused on this, you're going to be very distracted. Was there a turning point when, for, in your career when you got that message more than maybe another time and uh, understood? I mean, it was a, uh, there was a certain amount of maturity that it took for you to, mm -hmm. to uh, succeed at this level. Yeah. 
Um, I think as a as a young kid, uh, like I say, growing up, you really don't know the ex expectations of what it takes to play in the NFL, right? Coming from college, coming from the NFL, um, you're young. I was drafted at 20 years old. There was a lot of things I didn't know that I had to go through and, and learn to understand how to get better. And I think that's a part of life in, in, in any shape or form. And uh, it was a lot of things when I came in the league that I definitely did that I probably shouldn't have did, you know what I'm saying? But how can you learn? How can you get better without going through, you know, hitting your head on the wall or, you know, running into a brick wall? Like, you, you're not going to be able to learn. So to answer that question, it's a lot of things that, you know, I can't say I wish I would have did different, but I wouldn't have grown. I wouldn't have, you know, had growth from them situations. So I think everything happens for a reason. And uh, there's no perfect situation in life, you know. You, you live, you learn, and the best thing I say is you get better. So once you make mistakes, as long as you can get better from the mistakes and you're not making the same mistakes, you know, there's not no one perfect person in the world. If, if it was, you know, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. But, yeah, I, I think you just you live and you learn and you just get better. That's all you can do. Sean, so how much did you have to learn and how much was your, just your great speed, your natural ability to track a football? I think, man, Moreau, just to answer that, I, I think you – every day you wake up, still to this point, I'm learning. There, you, you can never get to a point where you never learn. You can always learn. You can always get better. Uh, for me, since day one, I always came in. I was undersized. Um, I was always the smallest since I've been in Pop Warner. And for me, that, that gave me an extra edge. That gave me an extra confidence being, you know, raised in Los Angeles, the things I saw growing up. Um, a lot of stuff wasn't promised in my life. My, my parents didn't come from money, you know, they, they all worked, they struggled to put, you know, food on the table. So for me, having the mentality for my father to say like, look, man, we know the odds and they not gonna change. It wasn't like I was gonna wake up and grow and to be six five. So with that being said, I had to work extra hard. And a lot of work that I did put in, a lot of people really didn't know because I didn't broadcast that. You know, with Team Jackson, we always had a plan and we always pursued that plan. A lot of people didn't believe in it, but that didn't mean I was going to stop working. I just got in the gym. I stayed on the field. I stayed with my track coach, and I knew, like, I'm going to be small, but if I can stay fast throughout all these years, I can pro prolong my career. So um, for me, I wasn't the biggest in the weight room. I didn't really lift weights. Like, you can ask teammates to play with me. Like, when it was time to go in the weight room, I used to live here and there, and I used to be one of the first ones out the weight room. <laughs> But at the end of the day, when it came to running and speed, I would stay on the track and I stayed fast. So that was how I was able to stay, you know, in the league for that for that long to be able to stay fast. Sean, um, you gave us a lot of exciting moments both here and other places. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite play as an Eagle, and specifically, what do you remember about it? Man, I got so many. <laughs> Where do I start? Uh, favorite play, man. I have multiple favorite plays. Honestly, uh, I mean, in particular, one play was the the punt return in 2010. Um, I think that goes down in my in my book as one of the greatest plays ever. Um, to be able to be in that game, man. I can remember going to halftime, and you know, everybody's like, "Man, this game is over." I think it was like 31 to 10, 31 to three. It was something crazy at halftime, man. I remember going in the locker room. Michael Vick, uh, me, LaShawn McCoy, Jeremy Macklin, like we all came in there. We was like, we was all hyped up. And you would have thought we won the game at halftime. And I remember Coach Reed looking at us, he, you know, he always puts his glasses down and it's like, everybody shut up. Like he just it told everybody to shut up. And it was like, like oh, <laughs> and we gave him attention. And he just, he, he made a speech. And after that speech was made, and we riled up and talked again, and it was just something that just turned on. And we was like, man, we going to come out here and we're going to win this game. And uh, to be in a game like that, to be down at a deficit like that and to come back and to win, it was like the second half. It was nothing we could have done wrong. Like, after all the wrong we did in the first half, it was like that second half, there was nothing we could do wrong. And we came back and we won that game. And I just remember that punt return was like, I was like I sailed into the end zone like an eagle just kind of picked me up and flew me into the end zone. I'll tell everybody that. But, uh, and I was special. You know, I, me losing my dad in 2009 and, and 2010, to, you know, to have that game and just I could just remember everything like it just was surreal, man. I was for sure one of the biggest plays. What about that? I mean, I think you muffed the punt. You ran back five yards. Ron <laughs> gave himself a concussion. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember about that play specifically? <laughs> Can you sort of relive it for us? Ah, uh, well, specifically, I tell people a, a lot 
I honestly didn't think he was going to punt that ball to me. I'm, I'm sitting back to him, 13 seconds left. I'm like, there's no way in the world he's going to give me an opportunity to catch this punt. So I can tell, like, when he kicked the ball, it was like he shanked it. Like, I can tell the way he was, like, trying to line up and, like, kick it out of, like, directional, kick it out of bounds. And a lot of times what, what people don't know, when them punters try to purposely kick it out of bounds, a lot of times they shank it because they're trying to purposely do it so hard to get it out of bounds. So it was like he almost, like, you know, shanked it and then went off his foot and it, like, curved. So when the, how the way the punt came down, it was an unusual punt. So by by the time I'm getting it, it was almost like it kind of like curved in a way where it like kind of hit off my arm and like went to the right a few steps. But I say this too: when I fumbled, I purposely fumbled for y'all that don't know. <laughs> when I fumbled, it made it perfect because when the ball went like two three yards to the right, like everybody kind of shifted out their lane. So by the time I caught the, I mean picked the ball up, I like stuck my foot in the ground and just hit that. Hit that little gap, and then Jason Avant depleted himself, knocked the dude out, knocked himself out, and everything else was history. Hey, just when you talked about overcoming your size, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, uh, undersized receivers today, not everybody's going to have your speed. But right. when you look back at your legacy in this league, do you think maybe you opened some eyes to give some smaller receivers a, yeah, a bigger sure. opportunity? 100%. Um, I, I definitely like to take the credit, uh, you know. Before me, I mean, you can go back before us. There wasn't really too many receivers that – I mean, you have some, you know, Steve Smith, Marvin Harrison, you, you, Dante Hall back in the day. But I think I've really changed the game as far as, like, a guy under six feet, you know, less than 180 pounds, majority of my career, to really be able to play wide receiver and play punt return and play it at a high level. I don't think – like I said, before me, there's not too many guys that really did it at a high level. I mean, you have some punt returners – but to play receiver and, you know, be a number one wide, one wide receiver in the league for that long of a time and to still be able to have the playmaking ability to play punt return or to, you know, get reverses, to come out the backfield, you know, to, to play in the slot, to do the deep threat. I mean, to be an overall wide receiver, I don't think it's really too many before me that did it at that level. So I think I definitely started a trend. I'm blessed to be able to change the game for younger – I mean, not for young guys, but the guys are undersized. Um, that are not the typical 6'2", 6'3", wide receivers that are both big, buff, and bulky receivers. So to say that, I, I definitely think I, I opened up a lot of eyes for GMs and, you know, scouts to be able to say, we, we're not going to miss the next guy that might be a, a sh smaller frame or shorter guy. Obviously, part of your story is playing elsewhere during the prime mm -hmm. of your career. To be sitting up here today to sign back in 2020, yeah. how did you move past that? How did I move past what part? I'm getting cut. Ah oh, man, you know, I, I look at it as a, being in the NFL, man, it's a business first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's a shield. You know, the NFL is a shield. It's a business. So with that being said, uh, you know, Philadelphia has always been home to me. Share some some special moments here. I could just remember my, my young self living in Morristown, living in Philly, moving back to Morristown when I, when I came back the second time around. But, uh, you know, every time I was all, always out, you know, it's nothing but love, you know, have some friendships and some relationships that I, I will remember for the rest of my life, build some great um, times here, man. But uh, I just look at it as it's a business, man. Things happen in life, and, you know, you can't really change the things that's happening. All you can do is just wake up the next day and just, you know, be a better person. So for me, that being said, I just kind of took it on the chin and just kept going, man. You can't never really – adversity sets in, you got to – like, what's next? And for me, I was always a, a guy, wherever I would be at, I'm going to be the best person I can be and, uh, you know, just make plays, man. I, that, was, that was what my game was made up of, making plays, the big plays, big moments. And uh, I knew when I left, I, I, I knew if I continue to still do what I did, I hopefully can have a chance to come back and play here. You know, I still kept in touch with a lot of guys here on the team. And uh, when Doug came back, it was like, you know, let, let's tr let's figure out a way to make it happen. So, unfortunate the second time around, you know, it, with injuries and things of that nature that happened, it, it played a part. But uh, as y'all seen when I did come back, the, the, the first game, you know, I was I was enthusiastic. I was here. I was loving it. The crowd was loving it. And it just was unfortunate that I, you know, suffered some injuries that, you know, couldn't really finish out how, how I would want to. Just Just Sean, you're actually a little taller than you, but he's also very slight. Do you see any of the things that you did in Devontae Smith? Man, Devontae Smith, yeah, man, he's a, he's a heck of a player, man. I, 
you know, I watched him in Alabama, the things he was able to accomplish at Alabama. Um, you know, like you say, he, he he might be a little taller than me, but yeah, the, the, the stature and the frame, obviously the same. Um, skinny, not really the biggest, but uh, the way he's able to go up and catch the, the football, the way he's able to make plays, um, definitely see a lot of similarities in him. And, uh, you know, I look forward to continuously watching him play in that Philadelphia Eagle green jersey. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely think he's one of the top receivers in the league, still young, still got a lot of upside to it. I don't think he's done. Um, and the player he's going to turn into. But as far as what he's done, yeah, he's a special player, man. I love watching him play. Hey, Sean, you're, you're still a young guy. What do you want to do with your time uh, now that you're done? Yeah, I'm still young. Man. I'm, I don't even really consider it a retire, retirement. You know, like at the end of the day, I'm 37, man. Just had, today is my birthday. So it's just special to be, be able to come back in um, to officially, you know, sign and come back and sign with the Eagles and, you know, I look at it as I'm starting a new chapter in my life. And uh, the new chapter is uh, I have a, I'm really like an entrepreneur, honestly. Uh, I got, got so many different variables in different directions, different business ventures. Um, I got my kids, you know, that, that I'm pushing out that wants to play football. And, uh, you know, I got a documentary that's going to re, re come out. You know, I had a documentary before that we just, uh, you know, signed a deal with Amazon that's about to come out soon. So think you guys are going to be seeing a lot more of me. I'm going to try to come to Philadelphia a lot more, too, and just be involved with the team, man, because I, I love what they're doing here. And it's just a special place, man. This is like my second home. So for me, man, I think you're going to still see me. Uh, you know, I'm very active on social media, and uh, you know, I definitely want to be more active here in the community. So, so much stuff. I can't even tell you all in one, man, but it's a, it's a lot of stuff I got going on, man. Just stay tuned. There's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of players last, that when they uh, retire, or that when they retire from the NFL, they have a tough time transitioning. Um, to right. getting the thrill of playing and, and the competitiveness. And mm -hmm. have you thought much about that? And obviously you do have your hand in a lot of uh, um, enterprises. Yeah. Do you think that'll be enough to satisfy that? that I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't think you'll never get the thrill back of running out that tunnel and hearing the fans cheer for you and you know you playing and competing at a high level. Um, but for me, honestly, it was an easy transition. It was an easy decision because I feel like I fulfilled everything on the field. Um, can I still play? Yes. Do I want to still play? It's probably 50-50. Um, if I could just wake up and go play on Sundays, it would probably be the idea thing. <laughs> the, the Monday through Saturday is, uh, is a little tough. But honestly, man, for me, uh, it was an easy decision. Um, and I, like I said, I don't, I don't have no regrets in life. I don't, I don't live my life on regrets. I live my life on the next day and just being the best person I can be, being the best role model, being the best father being the best son, being the best brother, being the best friend, and uh, just building relationships, man. I, I, I really feel like my life is destined um, to be able to make it from where I came from and to be sitting in front of you guys' face right now, man, is, it, it really speaks numbers. And uh, when I was a young kid, man, I did it at a high level, man. I, I think a lot of kids that are playing in the NFL now looked up to me, uh, still have a lot of relationships with a lot of young guys. and. For them to just be able to tell me how much I meant to the game and how much of a legend or how much I already meant to them just speaks numbers for me, man. So uh, I don't know, man. I think y'all still going to see a lot more of me, man. It's, it's, it's not over, man. Who, who knows what, what that next phase brings. Sean, your, your, your last game as an Eagle, your last reception as an Eagle was like an 81-yard touchdown catch from Jalen. Mm -hmm. um, it was like maybe his third start. I was kind of curious, like, what you thought of him then and just, like, how you've seen him progress to where he is now and everything. Did you think that was possible? Man, did I think it was possible? Man, you, you should ask Howie Roseman the same question you asked me. I, I, I think I was lobbying for Jalen Hurts back when we had Carson Wentz starting at that time when everybody was like, why would we pick Jalen Hurts in the second round? I remember we was at practice, and uh, Jalen used to – he was actually, like, the backup over behind Wentz. And uh, – we were sitting back, me, Howie, I think, uh, Alshon Jeffrey at the time, and uh, Jalen was actually going versus the, the starting defense because, you know, as you know, when you're the backup, you go versus the, the one. So I'm sitting there watching him, and I'm just seeing him sling the ball, and he making crazy plays. And it was like, I look back at Howie, I tap Howie, I said, Howie, I told you, that, that kid going to be special, man. And uh, just to see where he's at now, man, I, one thing I can say, um, back when I was here, I want to say it was 2020, um, we actually trained in the off season, and he came to Tampa. I don't know if, you, if those of y'all remember, but he came to Tampa, and everybody's like, "Why is Jalen Hurts training with Deshaun Jackson? Like, why is why isn't why isn't Carson Wentz out there training?" 
And uh, it was actually, he just made it convenient because I trained in Tampa and he came out there and trained with me and we trained for like a whole week. And, you know, we was able to build and I just seen like, his mentality was different then. Like you can tell him coming from Alabama, just his mentality of uh, just how eager he was to win. He had like a, a older mentality. It was like he was like an uncle or like an old father. And it was just like the game was never too big. It's just his, his persona, his his demeanor. He's like walking around, he's flicking the ball. I'm like, something special about him. I was like, like the game is not too big for him. It's like he'd been here before. So I definitely saw Jalen Hurts before with the World Series now. So I, I definitely, I feel like he's just starting, man. I think he's he's going to be here for a long time, man. He's going to have some special moments here in Philadelphia. And uh, as you can see, man, he's QB number one for a reason. Sean, how, how important is uh, getting into the Hall of Fame for you? Do you have a sense of you know, how you know how real that is? For you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, growing up, uh, <laughs> I think that was a goal for me. It was a vision. It was a dream. Um, realistically, I, I I never really envisioned nothing else but being a Hall of Fame. You know, so for me, I definitely feel like my body of work speaks for itself and, uh, you know, records, creating records, breaking records and creating records. There was records that wasn't even heard of that I actually put in the record book. So um, Canton, Ohio, you know, I, I know they have some some memorabilia and some stuff in, in you, you, you know, in that, in them rooms in there. So uh, like I say, man, I, I definitely think I, I, it's deserving. I'm, I'm sure, you know, that's, that's not for me to answer. It's not for me to vote on, but, uh, as far as the body of work, I think it's there. And I'll definitely be honored because that ring of fame and that, that honor is, is special, man. I think that's what we all play for is to go play in the, I mean, to go play and, you know, make it for the Hall of Fame. Win a Super Bowl, Pro Bowls, all that stuff, all pro is great. But uh, at the end of the day, I think that gold jacket is the number one thing overall. So uh, that being said, I'm hopeful that I can get in there. And, I'm, you know, I'm blessed if I am being able to get in there. All right. Thanks, everyone.